Back to working on this fuel pump. I went back and forth with the eBay uh, seller to make sure this was the right part. Doesn't match at all my old part. I'll show you. But the functionality should be the same. You've got the old part here with a rubber gasket. It's only two years old. It's already cracking around the edges on the outside of the tank. So that's not great. This was an Airtex E3560M, which is a uh, flex vehicle. This is a flex Suburban 2003. And you can see it has a square plug on it, whereas this one has an ovalized plug on it. So the ovalized plug is new. I guess it's an updated wiring harness kit. You can see it came with this little pigtail and I have to splice this in underneath the vehicle which I don't know if I can show because I don't want to get dirt in the camera but there's four little crimp connectors two of the wires are larger than the other two uh, so we should be able to figure that out they did have instructions on their website which they sent me via eBay the seller was very communicative 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 and he was uh, able to let me know that this is the retrofit kit. This isn't just shoehorning it in. It's actually meant to be an upgraded connector. These connectors, after replacing it before, there's a little keeper that goes in there and holds it, which has broken. So they're right about the plug not being that durable. This part didn't break because this is the newer pump from two years ago. But the other end of it definitely could use an upgrade. So I'm going to trust them on that. I've got to do some stripping back and some wiring and some crimping. But once I figured that out, this little black connector here is a pressure sensor. And you can see my float is long and sticks way out, whereas the new one has a different design with the sending unit up here. I'll show you that in just a second if I can get that out very easily. Uh, so it looks totally different, which freaked me out and I guess I shouldn't have freaked out. I should have just tried to shoehorn it in, but I wanted to be sure. So it took me an extra week and now we're back at it. I've already put this one in. It comes with a new gasket. Again, this is an eBay part that was much cheaper than anything at the auto parts stores. You've got another little boot here. Here's the new sending unit. Uh, this goes up and down. I guess it doesn't matter where the the electricity is sent from it seems it should work the same as long as it goes to the bottom of the tank and the top of the fuel level looks like that'll be about right once it gets to the top of the fuel level so we'll we'll trust them that it's gonna work I had to snap this on it came loose in the package this was already on it the filter in the bottom the strainer I had to take out my black sensor like I said this is a pressure sensor it just pushes right in whoa so we filled that with fuel already. This pushes right in, pulls out of the old one. You just wiggle it, wiggle it. And then I put a little gas on it to lubricate it and pushed it right back in. Super easy. So now I've got my two plugs, got my two nozzles that my fuel lines are gonna hook to. And we'll see how it works. I'm gonna get it back in there now. Shoehorn it in. Shoehorn. That's my word of the day. You gotta have a word of the day, right? You gotta bring it back. Bring some kind of words back all the time that are out of use. Keep the English language fresh again. And of course, the internet's good for inventing new ones. So we don't need to be doing that. But I do like to bring back antiquated words. Most kids these days won't even know what a shoehorn is. And that's a sad thing. Either we've improved on shoes or we've decreased our ability to use vocabulary. So there's a little tab here, which I don't know if you can see. This little tab goes in a slot right here. It's very important that it goes in there correctly or else you get into issues getting this collar, this retaining collar down. Tap it in.
make sure all three grooves are down and going into the slot. These are turning. Looks like this one's turning. Doesn't take a lot of force. So, looks like it's going to me. Well, as you can see, I got the retainer ring all the way. See how the slot's turned? It turns clockwise. And now we're in good shape. I've got the tab under there. Don't know if you can see that, but there's a little white tab. It's fit down in the groove. And then this little keeper needs to snap into that slot. So there you go. That's in. Now it's time to go do the wiring for our new upgraded connector. Doing this is that little piece that's broken off the old connector. I think you can kind of finagle it in there, but it's supposed to stay with the old connector. There's my old connectors. I've got this one, which we're going to reuse. And then we have this one. This one goes into the pressure sensor. This one goes into the actual wiring for the pump itself. So I have to strip this back, figure out how long my pigtail is here, splice in. They say to stagger the connections. One here, one here, one here, one here, so you don't have a big bulge in your wiring loom. So, start stripping it back. Couldn't quite reach this outside the vehicle. The running boards are in the way. So, I have to do it under here. That's okay. At least I have a nice place to rest on my creepy crawly. That's another thing we should bring back, huh? Creepy crawlies. When's the last time your kid said, Oh, I'm afraid of creepy crawlies. Probably not recently. <laughs> of course, always wear safety glasses. Use me as a perfect example. Every time you dig into a project like this, you end up with lots of new stuff you learn. Once you learn that stuff, you can forget it a little bit after you've not done it for a couple of years. But you'll always have that knowledge somewhere in your brain and you'll be refreshing your brain instead of learning from the beginning. So I think these things are worth it for the do-it-yourself type of person. Doesn't mind getting a little dirty and having a sense of accomplishment once you're finished. That's my philosophy. I'm going to try to instill that with my kids and my grandkids. So far it's mostly working with the kids. <laughs> I hate these cheap Chinese strippers, but I forgot to get my good ones and bring them under here with me. That's another thing about working under cars, is going in and out is a pain in the rear. So I'm going to go double check on the instructions they sent me, make sure I do it right, but I'm assuming fat black to fat black, thin black to thin black, and the other two are self-explanatory. As suspected, I was correct. Thick black to thick black. Thin black, etc. Supposedly this eliminates future wiring issues, they say. The connector on the old design would come loose from time to time and cause high resistance connections. I'm going to kind of wind these up a little bit just to give myself a good I'm going to use that for my length and trim my gray wire back to about here. But the old connectors would get high resistance over time due to loose connections. Is what they say. And of course, they know better than we do. I bet you this connector was just cheaper, and that's what they wanted to build it with in China. But that's my cynicism. One thing you don't want to skimp on when you're working on 
electrical things is the quality of your tape. I think this is 3M tape. I've tried using that cheap Harbor Freight stuff and Walmart brand, etc. It don't work very well. Don't recommend it one tiny bit. So I'm just kind of walking down the wire here just to hold them together and make it easy. And looks like my connectors being staggered was a great idea. Thank you, internet, for that. And there we go, our upgraded connector. Cool. Let's hope it works. So I'm done putting the fuel pump in, done with the uh, rewiring. The pump comes on, made noise. It definitely has electricity or power, so it is pumping gas. So figured we'd go back to square one, test the fuel pressure, and here we go. I've pumped the, I actually just turned the vehicle off and we are trying to figure out if it's going to hold pressure this time. As you remember at the beginning, it would lose pressure after you turn the key off and it's supposed to hold for up to an hour, I think they say, but in any case, it's supposed to hold pressure uh, and that keeps the pressure on the fuel rail, makes for easy starts and that was my symptom. It was hard starting, I had to crank the key multiple times to get it going, so now we're in good shape. Uh, looks like we're holding pressure. As you can see, we are at 42 pounds. Supposed to be up around 60. Mm, yeah, I've never gotten that high. I think we were in the 50s when we started. This pump maybe doesn't pump as high a pressure, so I'm a little worried about that. Um, once I start the engine, it holds up at about 50, 45. Somewhere in there, it bounces around quite a bit. I'm kind of worried about that too. This pump theoretically has a warranty, a lifetime warranty. So if it goes out, I'm gonna contact the eBay seller and try to exercise that warranty. But yeah, looks like it was so successful. It's slowly bleeding down as you can see. And uh, looks like we might be in good shape here as far as having a functioning fuel pump again got no leaks back there that I can see everything's reconnected life is good thanks YouTube hope this helped you I'm not a you know 100% perfect mechanic but hey I get it done shade tree right there's my shade tree and my dog <laughs> all right have a good one see ya